last one of the year and the last one of the 2016-2017 school year. Our last moments together. All right. So in our final preparation, let me clap some more. In our final preparation for the map test, we are going to talk about context clues and figurative language. I've told you guys multiple times that the reason I think we struggled on the benchmark test and struggle on the map test is because of vocab. Now, in the year, I don't have enough time to really go over all the vocabulary you need to know for your lives, so I need to teach you the strategies to figure out what words mean. Now, number one, you have to not be giving up on things, okay? You cannot look at a word and think, I don't know what this means, I'm totally done. That's your first level of not being able to figure it out. But once you get past that, then you have to actually use context clues. And I know Ms. Hall taught you about this, but we're going to do review because it is the end of the year. It's our last one. Woo okay, so what are context clues? Context clues are a word or words that act as hints to show you the meaning of other words. Okay? Now there are four main types of context clues we're going to be talking about. And you have this lovely chart on your handout, so make sure you follow along. I've given you an example with each one of them. So some of you may be able to figure it out without me actually telling you. Others of you will need this. So, when we talk about the type that is the synonym, this just basically means that you are using oops, a word that means the same thing to show what another word means. So in our sample sentence we have the baseball coach punished the team's duplicity or deceitfulness after they admitted to using steroids to boost their batting averages. So where it says duplicity that's the word that we would be trying to figure out. Now and then it says or deceitfulness so it's giving you that synonym it's saying here's this word or we could use this other word to describe it. Deceitfulness, duplicity, you're lying, you're cheating, that kind of thing, okay? Now when we're talking about antonyms, it's very similar, but the opposite. So you are using a word that means the opposite to figure out what a word means. So again, with all of these, we're sticking with this idea of the word duplicity. We have no idea what it means, so these types of context clues are going to show us. Unlike my last employee who had integrity to spare, you have nothing more than duplicity and will not receive a recommendation for me from another job. So, integrity is our antonym for duplicity. So, integrity is like doing the right thing all the time and saying, unlike this, oh my gosh, there's a cat. So, it's saying, unlike this, where you would have integrity, you have duplicity, and it is terrible. All right? Hi. Next, we have a definition. So this is when the text gives you the actual definition. Okay? This happens a lot, but oftentimes we don't actually notice it because we see a word and we're like, oh my gosh, I don't know what this means. But if you keep reading, it will tell you. So when it says Jack's duplicity, crafty dishonesty, so like being dishonest, caused him to steal his co-workers' pensions by funneling their money into an offshore account. Okay? So if you keep reading, oftentimes it will actually give you the definition of the word that is there. And our last one is an example. When it, it in the text. So when the text provides an example to help define the word. So I was aghast at her duplicity. Here's the word we don't know. When she stole my diamond earring, stole them on eBay, and lied to me about it the whole time. So it gives you this example. Like, I was aghast at her duplicity. She was like this. And I'm going to tell you what this word means because I'm going to give you this example of what she did. Okay? So we have this little practice here. The woman crossed her fingers as her daughter did the cheer. She was hoping that everything would work out for her daughter as she vied for a position on the squad. Her daughter wanted to be a cheerleader. So we're going to try and use context clues. Does it use a synonym? No, it does not. Does it use an antonym? No. 
Does it give us a definition? She vied for a position on the squad. No, it does not. So it's giving us the example. So it says she vied for this position. So if she wants to be on the squad, she wants to be a cheerleader, we can figure out by example that vied means like she tries to get. Okay, she's trying to get this position on the squad or she's competing, right? She's desperately, desperately working. And the woman's like, oh my gosh, I want my daughter to do well. And she's like, I want to be a cheerleader. And so she is vying for this position. And so what helps us to understand? The text gives us an example. This game is getting thrown. Okay, moving on. We are on, oh my gosh, get out of here. We are on two figurative language, so figurative language pops up a lot. We're going to go through this quickly. Hopefully, this is all review. All right, a metaphor is a comparison that doesn't use like or as, okay? So, our example, if you're sad, I'll be your rock. I'm never going to actually be a rock, but I could be your emotional rock. So, it is a metaphor, okay? Strong as a rock. But we don't use like or as. Because when we use like or as, that is... A simile. <laughs> that is a simile. <laughs> so, I'm as hungry as a cow. Here I am, being ravenous like a cow. Using like or as. Comparing myself to this animal and its hunger. Using one of those words. Alliteration is the repetition or repeating of a sound, of a consonant sound in a sentence. So, it's not a vowel sound. So, it's not A, E, I, O, or U. That's called assonance. Consonance or alliteration is when you have the repetition of that sound. So, the beautiful bouquet blossomed in the bright sun. All right? Fantastic. We have all of that B sound. So also, it could be like, you could have a mix of C and K, but if they're both making that K sound, then that would actually count. Or C and S, and they're both making that sound, okay? Onomatopoeia is when, oh, how can we, how can we define this? When the words create the sound, okay? So the word actually makes a sound. So, blam, pow, wahoo, or ah! <laughs> the children screamed with extreme fear. <laughs> okay? That's an onomatopoeia. So in a lot of comic books, they have it. They, like, actually show you the sounds. Okay? Onomatopoeia. Next, we have hyperbole, which is an extreme exaggeration. So, I am so angry that I could breathe fire into your face. I will never actually be able to do that, but... I'm going to use hyperbole. Liam, stop. Get off the chair. I'm going to use hyperbole to exaggerate that and say something that's literally never going to happen, but it expresses how angry I am. Personification is giving human characteristics to an object. So we could say... The trees danced in the wind. Nothing can really dance except for, like, humans. So we are taking that human characteristic and applying it. Your head just fit perfectly into my hands. <laughs> We're taking that human characteristic and applying it to an inanimate object. Uh, we could also do, like, the flowers breathed in the spring air. Flowers aren't actually really breathing it in, right? That's like a human thing that we can do, but we can personify them to say that we are. And an oxymoron is a combination of words with opposite meanings. So we have these a lot in our language. So deafening silence. So deafening means like extremely loud and aggressive, but silence is like, oh, it's completely no sound. So deafening thinks of like super, super loud and silence is nothing. So putting it together is an oxymoron. Or if the police go, and this girl was found missing. If she's missing, she's not there, but she was found. So it's an oxymoron because she was found missing. All right. 
So, figurative language, context clues, take everything that we've learned and stick it all in your brain and do amazing on the math test and remember everything and go to ninth grade and impress everybody by being the smartest people ever because we know that you are. I know that you are. This is our last video together. You're wonderful children. All right, go do task 10. Let me know if you have any questions.